Hello everyone and welcome. Industry Insight – How companies are bridging the gap towards sustainable future. My name is Heikki Wepseläinen, President at the APP Large Motors and Generators Division. And I'm happy to have Tim Schulte, Division President of Soldier Service Division here with me today. Tim, welcome to join me today. Thank you, Heikki, and thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. World is on mission. So we need to try to change the half CO2 emissions by 2030. Companies are facing increasing demands over challenges to be more transparent how they are going to contribute. And that's where we also step in. We help our customers to drive the change, we focus on our own operations and we work with our suppliers. Good news here is that World Energy Agency has stated focusing on energy efficiency of the world could save up to 40% of the world CO2 emissions by 2050. This actually alone would already take us where we need to be based on the Paris Agreement. Great news. But to do this, it's the single largest, largest opportunity actually is the focusing energy efficiency on electric motors and industrial processes. Great business opportunity, huge impact for our society. But we need to do one thing, Tim. We need to be able to explain what all of us, individuals, companies, are enabled and committed to contribute on the journey. I think that I, as an engineer, I find it exciting because the number you mentioned that we can contribute a big portion uh, of our goal to limit, you know, the temperature rise, we can do by becoming more efficient. As an engineer, I like that, right? And, and the second one, you know, um, last week we were in an offsite in the middle of Switzerland, and I grew up here, a place I had not been in 40 years. And you know, you could see how the glacier is, is, has retracted, right? It was 40 years ago, nearly in the valley, and now it's, there's not much left. So you can believe in that, you know, global warming is happening or not. But if you see the results, it really makes you wonder what happens. And I think there's no, there's no doubt in my mind, we have to do something. Correct. So the change is real. I think so. So on that note, uh, private sector actually is a huge contributor on sustainability journey. So think, then can you describe what Sulcher is balancing the growth and also on, on commitment to reducing CO2 emissions? Yeah. Look, you know, like you, the company has been around for nearly 200 years, right? And I think in the life of the company, uh, we have reinvented ourselves and we stand for innovation and uh, you know industrial history so uh, I have no doubt we will have to reinvent ourselves and right now it feels like we're at the beginning of another transformation and I think also think we're in a good place that you know our products can help uh, our customers to have uh, processes that you know are more efficient uh, cheaper more sustainable and uh, also more reliable um, and as you know, you know, we have three divisions, flow equipment, uh, chemtech and services, which is my division. And all of them are part of this journey already. And, you know, one, one number that always jumps in my mind is that, you know, more than 40% of the people in this world have no access to clean water. And uh, we are in the business and, you know, providing pumps and other equipment to switch plants. So, so right there, you know, I think that's a great mission uh, for the company. Uh, when you think CO2 capture, you know, we have a technology that helps that. And then, you know, when you think about service and repairing products, uh, by repairing products, upgrading them, very often you really, you minimize the resource usage over the lifetime of the product. And as you know, we joined your initiative uh, on efficiency mission. So uh, I think, yeah, I think we take it much, uh, much more serious than we took it maybe 10 years ago. Correct. And thank you for Solcher joining on uh, APP Energy Efficiency Movement. 
it is an initiative the leading by example where companies come together uh, to drive the change on, on mutual partnership basis. Uh, like in APP, um, we have a uh, 2030 sustainability target, uh, which is basically enabling uh, actively thriving low copper society. And that means we work with our customers, but also with our suppliers, but also very much focusing on our own value chain, our products, offering, and everything basically but do uh, on end to end. And key part of our strategy is actually really to help our customers and our suppliers to try to change. And that's also the perfect opportunity that we are working together to change in the society. But we also focus on our own operations, like uh, CO2 reductions in large motors and generators globally. We have reduced CO2 emissions more than 90% since 2019 baseline. And already today we are meeting our 2030 targets, but the journey continues. But let's look about opportunity. 45% of world electricity is consumed by electric motors. There's 300 million motors out there running. And connecting this back on this opportunity of focusing energy efficiency could save up to 40% of world CO2 emissions. I think we are on something big. So motors are everywhere. They all processes, all applications. They run pumps, fans, compressors. And that's exactly like a soldier spot on talking about pumps, opportunities, how we're able actually to change the world together. As you said, we can have a major impact uh, in reducing CO2 emissions if we upgrade the installed base, which is what you mentioned before, right? And we call this retrofit. Many times customers come to us and say, can you repair our pump? And sometimes the answer is we can repair it, but we can do even more. We can optimize the system, bring it to the latest technology standard. And whenever we can do it, we do that. And uh, we can optimize the pump curves very frequently. And often we can also suggest that there are uh, more efficient motors uh, with the upgraded installation. And I find this very exciting because, you know, number one, you extend the lifetime of a product. You save all the uh, resources that you need for the new product. And you can often have huge cost savings uh, for the customer because, as you know, the cost is a factor today. And in fact, we had a customer in, in Norway and you in that very specific application, we think they can save about 520 tons of CO2 a year. It's maybe in the picture, but not huge, but it's an important step forward. And if you do it many times over, we have many savings. So that was one example. And then two, maybe looking a bit more forward, um, you think CO2 uh, capturing is becoming uh, a topic more and more. And, you know, we have a client in Canada that, you know, is a, actually a coal plant and we can help them uh, reduce 90% of the CO2 uh, at uh, right after um, the burning process, which, which is quite amazing, right? If you think that's possible today, it wasn't possible, you know, a few years ago. And then the last one is about green hydrogen. You know, currently they're building uh, the largest commercial scale plant in Saudi Arabia. And we're part of this project and because, you know, we know how to pump uh, uh, hydrogen. So uh, there are three examples that I think are very different, but they're all exciting. And I think they all help uh, move us towards uh, a better future. Heike, how do you, how your efficient products uh, can um, help with the sustainability uh, question? Yeah, that, that's the excellent question. And uh, let me also shortly go back what you stated on optimizing the powertrains. But uh, I have a personal saying that the best energy is the energy which is never used. And uh, I hope actually it makes all of us to think, not only us, but everyone, that uh, how it changes our behaviors and practices that we are not consuming energy on our daily lives. But this is applicable for individuals, but also very much for the companies and everyone. But there are actually excellent ways to, to, to try to change. Like on our portfolios, we have leading edge technologies and capabilities to drive the energy efficiency. 
So just to bring a couple of examples, we have the world highest efficient motor running at our customer's factory, helping the customers to reduce the energy bill, but more importantly also reducing the CO2 emissions. And when, work, when we work with our customers, our domain expertise, understanding customers' processes of different segments and applications, like in pumping industry, we are able to convert customer requirements in our product offering, to really to have the right sizing of the product, right offering, and run the motors with the minimum consumption of energy. That's actually huge value for our customers also. And APP, we have a perfect opportunity, unique opportunity. We have an offering combining drives and motors. And this enables us to optimize the powertrains, to really kind of focus on performance, energy efficiency, and provide even more values for our customers. And that's exactly going back on this, where we could work more together to really to think from a customer requirements, pump into water, pump motor and drive, offering optimal solutions, even creating more leading edge capabilities. By saying this, when we talk about the customers, which is the key, the reason why we are market leader in the space we do operate, we also provide four factors, reliability, availability, maintainability and safety. And those are actually the unique factors, which is further helping us to grow our lead but also very much connected on sustainability, because that is actually lowering the operating cost for our customers, that is expanding the lifetime, but it's also safeguarding the recyclability of our products. That's how we're able to actually have a win-win situation, support the business, but to support the transition. So Tim, talking about life cycle solutions, do you have any good examples to illustrate or talk about how Sulcher is helping your customers or society accelerate the decarbonization pace. Yes, and you know, I like to come back on what you said, you know, uh, addressing the installed base can have a huge impact, right, in uh, getting to our CO2 reduction targets. And like the example I brought about retrofit, that is one of the biggest impacts we can have, among other things. And we notice it's not always the product, it's also the people. Because you know that we have a limited amount of people that actually understand it, can understand the customer application, and then also talk to the engineers and um, you know translate that feedback into an improved product. So we have actually started investing into a training program for these very specialized uh, skill sets, so we can have more people and more projects that can you know uh, execute those 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 uh, opportunities so i think that's one thing and uh, it's not product related but the people you know i'm sure in your business the same they're as important as the products and the other one is we invest quite a bit into additive manufacturing because we can respond often quicker to customer needs we can repair more efficient we can repair certain things that we couldn't repair some time ago and we also lose use less material when we produce the parts. So that as well is a other example. And another thing I think we can, as an industry player, we could cooperate more is, you know, having the discussion that we have now. Because, you know, I'm, I'm convinced it's not one energy source that we will have in the future and not one thing we need to do. We'll most likely have a mix of energy sources and we need to do a mix of improvements. Efficiency gain is one of them to get to our targets. And I think if we, as an industry, can collaborate more to have these kind of uh, conversations in society, I think that would be a good way to drive you know, uh, progress forward. Yeah, Tim, it's exactly right stated that when we're able to combine the sustainability, people and culture, we are creating the purpose and we become even more attractive uh, employee as we already are today while driving the chains, spot on, I think. Tim, I want to take an opportunity to thank you for being here today uh, with me and with us on an important topic. We are very much on the same page. We are fully aligned. Collaboration is a key because no individual, no company can do this on its own. So we need everyone to join. Thank you for the time. And as it's very much in the heart what we want to do, work with our 
customers, partners, own operation suppliers to try to change towards sustainable future net zero. Thank you, Tim. Well, thank you for having me. And then, you know, I, we discussed at lunch, you know, I think if you're a young engineer today and you're wondering where to go, I think companies like ours are a great place to go. You can be in the center of action. You can make a real impact. You can have an impact on society and is most likely not for the short term, it's for the long term. So uh, I think it's a great place to be uh, in the center of action where you are and we are today. So thank you for having us. Spot on. Thanks, team. Thank you.